Thank you for taking the time to view this video that covers the material presented during our first Parent Academy, Partnering with Parents on the School Laptop. In an effort to expand our communication and partnership with middle school families, we will be hosting five sessions this year with topics relevant to raising adolescents. Keep an eye out for Dr. Otto's Principles Update for more information on days and times and topics. The members of our Mount Ararat Middle School Learning Commons team work tirelessly to support students and staff in and out of the classroom, providing seamless integration between traditional paper resources and the latest in technology innovations. This first Parent Academy was presented by our Assistant Principal, Megan Hayes Teague, Karen Silverman, our Learning Commons Media Specialist, and myself, Ryan Palmer, the Secondary Technology Integrator. The other members of our Learning Commons team are EdTech's Candice Wright and Joyce Rogers, as well as Micah Brown, our Technology Support Leader. Just like we do with our students and classes, we want to begin by identifying the learning targets for this session. By the time you finish viewing this video, we want you to gain an overview of the MLTI program, answer the question, do I need laptop coverage, understand the new take-home protocol, be familiar with the MAMS laptop SOPs, and view some best practices for laptop supervision at home. What is MLTI? Main Learning Technology Initiative started with state-owned or issued laptops for all 7th and 8th grade Maine students. In 2002, Maine became the first state in the nation to provide a personal computing device to all 7th and 8th grade students and their teachers. This initiative also provided software, wireless networks, technology support, and professional development with the goal of providing access to technology-enhanced educational experiences for all students. In the beginning of MLTI, most homes did not have a device that could access the Internet. It was even encouraged that parents use the device issued to the student themselves. Laptop coverage is not just for students who take the laptop home. It is highly recommended even if you choose to have your student's device stay at school because accidents can happen at school as well. Damaged machines will need to be repaired before we turn them back into the state when this round of MLTI is completed. When we do so, they need to be in good working order and free of visible damage. A new paradigm, MAMS, is not requiring laptops to go home. When MLTI began, it was a revolutionary program. By putting laptops in the hands of 7th and 8th grade students, we can ensure technology access to tens of thousands of families who otherwise might not have had the opportunity. But times have changed. With smartphones, tablets, and lower cost of access for computers, we at the middle school were getting frequent feedback that the school laptop was creating a battle that not all families wanted to fight. More than anything, we want to partner with families, not create another hassle. So we began looking for ways that we could empower parents to have more input into the decision about whether or not the school laptop should go home. If you are watching this video, we assume you are the parent of a 7th or 8th grader. If you are the parent of a 6th grade student, then you should know that the Chromebooks always stay at school. This practice will not change. But for 7th and 8th grade parents, we have used the opposite version of this in the past, which was that it went home unless parents requested otherwise. This year we're flipping the script a little bit. We are saying that laptops do not go home unless you request that they do. It is absolutely no problem for you to request that the laptop go home. You can make this request simply by filling out the form that we will talk about in a few minutes. We wanted parents to feel that they had more power in that decision. So instead of your child saying that they have to have their laptop at home and that the school is making them take it home, you need to say, yes, sure, we want it to come home. You may choose to say, no, we have other devices 
that will do the same job at home, or we want to limit our child's technology use at home. So again, we are trying to help parents feel like they have a say versus the school requiring that the device go home. In terms of the new protocol, you opt in. So instead of opting out, like you may have in the past, you opt in. You can change your mind at any time. So if you decide at the beginning of the year that you're not interested in it coming home, but later on you change your mind, you can contact the school and we can flip that around. Or the opposite. You can say, okay, we're going to opt in and bring it home. But then it starts to become a nuisance at your home. You can contact the school and opt out of it coming home. So we want you to feel like you have more say in whether the device comes home or not. In the early years of MLTI, parents such as yourselves were required to attend an informational meeting about the laptop devices before their child was allowed to take the device home. This is no longer the case, so viewing this video or attending an informational meeting is not a requirement. Let's shift gears a little bit and look at coverage and a timeline of dates which you and your student will want to pay close attention to. We cannot stress enough that whether you are taking coverage or not, whether you are opting to take the laptop home or not, we must have the coverage form signed and returned to the school. Parents must return the laptop coverage form by September 23rd, regardless of whether you are opting for coverage or not. If you wish to have coverage but are not prepared to pay the premium at this time, you must still return the form by the 23rd. You'll be billed for the premium in Infinite Campus. If you do not wish to have coverage and wish to pay for repairs to the device on your own, you too must also return the form by September 23rd. If you have billing questions or there is some sort of financial hardship in your home, you should contact Mrs. Hayes Teague or Dr. Otto. Many students are already asking, where is the form? How do I take my laptop home? When can I take my laptop home? Can I have my parents sign it so I can take it home? The truth is, the form has not been created just yet. As soon as it is created and available, we will let students know. Students, in fact, will be in charge of finding the form and bringing it home and returning it to school. We think that it would be a good way for them to work on responsibility. So students need to pick up the form and be in charge of its return. We will let them know when it is ready. We encourage you to have a conversation with your student when they bring this form home. This is the perfect time for you to discuss with them how and when they will use the device when it is at home. You should discuss things like safety, storage and charging of the device, as well as where they are allowed to use the device while it is at your home. Both parents and students will sign the form, hopefully after you have this discussion. Take-home forms will need to be returned to the school by October 4th. We are planning right now that students will be able to take the device home after the Indigenous Peoples Day holiday. Please remember that parents can change their mind about opting in or out of the device coming home. If you initially decide to opt in and then later find yourself struggling with your student, you may contact the school and let them know that you wish to not have the device come home. On the other hand, if you have initially opted out and then are discovering that it would be much more helpful for your student to bring the device home, you could simply let the school know that you wish to opt in. Probably the best means of communication with the school in regards to opting in or out of laptop take-home privileges would be the student's homeroom teacher. At this time, we are looking at a possible date of laptops going home of October 15th. For the last couple of years, during our longer winter and spring breaks, we have implemented a program called Laptops Unplugged which is very popular with parents and teachers, but not quite so popular with the students. But we think it's very successful when we have not allowed the laptop devices to go home during the longer breaks. Not only will the Laptops Unplugged program continue during breaks, 
but all laptop devices will be disabled between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. every single night. So even if you opt in to have your child's laptop come home, they will not be able to stay up until 3 a.m. on their school device. This will hopefully become a game changer. You should know that here at school, we let students know our expectations around the laptop use before we give them their devices. New this year have been the addition of little stickers on every device near the keyboard. This sticker contains a list of our MAMS laptop SOPs, which are our standard operating procedures. This way, students can be reminded constantly about our expectations and use of these tools. We start with no liquid or food. Liquid and food that enters the device causes damage that cannot be simply repaired, but rather requires a complete replacement of the device. This can be very costly. Accidents involving liquid or food are preventable simply by not using the device when liquid or food is nearby. Laptops should always be carried in a closed case. If the case is not closed, then there is a danger that the laptop may fall out of the case, resulting in damage. A laptop should never be picked up or carried by its screen. This can cause damage to the hinges. Instead, the laptop should be closed and carried with two hands and care as they move from place to place with the device. There should be no computer games at school. This applies to both online games as well as those that are downloaded to the device. The only exceptions to this rule are when a teacher specifically assigns an educational game to the students. Pause before you post or send. There are times when students may email others or collaborate with others on a document. Because of things that are sent or are posted online are permanent and retrievable, they should always think twice before sending or posting. This is an important step at preventing online bullying as well. Do not touch your friend's laptop. You may be able to help your friend if they are struggling, but please use your words rather than taking over the use of the laptop. If something were to happen to your friend's laptop while you were using it, it would be difficult to determine who was responsible for the device when it broke. You should also never leave your laptop unattended or outside after school. Always know where your laptop is at all times. If you are involved with sports or clubs after school, your device should be placed in your locker. Let's take a look now at best practices at laptop use while at home. This image, while it is very funny, helps to illustrate that parents are the ones in charge when it comes to the use of a Wi-Fi network at home. As we mentioned earlier, all laptop devices will be disabled between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Even so, though, you may decide when it is best for your child to stop using the device. So you do have the possibility of changing the password to your Wi-Fi router or simply unplugging the Wi-Fi router and placing it in your own room. It's also very helpful, too, that you have some parameters set with your child about using the laptop in a public space in the home, something like maybe the kitchen table or in the living room, somewhere where you can easily see or have some proximity to the laptop and the child can know that you may look at the laptop at any given moment. You can also set up some parameters with your child that when they are finished with their homework that they give the device to you and that you will hold on to it until they need to go to school in the morning. One strategy that would be really important for all parents and teachers is to have the student to share their password with their parents. While all teachers have access to all student usernames and passwords, parents should also have access as well. Students should never change their school-issued password, and it should be the only password that you need in order to access the device. There should also only be one account on the device as well. If you see that there are multiple accounts on the device, please contact the school. This is also a great time for you to discuss social media 
and safety with your student. Make sure that they are abundantly clear about your expectations in regards to social media. As you probably know, students are pretty clever when it comes to finding ways to sneak the things that they want. The MacBook Airs that the students use have the ability to have multiple screens that are available to the student. They can move between these screens very simply, just by taking four fingers on the touchpad and swiping right or left to get from screen to screen. They will often do this when they are online at a place where they're not supposed to be, but when the teacher comes to look at their device, they simply swipe right or left with four fingers and they're back onto the page where their teacher is expecting them to be. You should be aware of the screens that your child has open while they are at home using the laptop device. Something that you should also do is check the history of your child's browser frequently, especially when they are at home. All three major browsers, whether it is Chrome, Safari, or Firefox, all have a history menu up at the top of the screen when they are being used. You can simply go to the menu and look at multiple places that they have been uh, within the last hour or so, or you can take a look at their full history and see where they've been throughout the entire day. Students should never delete their history. If they do, then this is something that the school may want to know about uh, to ensure that students have not been going to places where they are not allowed to. Finally, you should reach out to the school if you see something on your student's device that you are concerned about. We will find some way to help you. Uh, we are here to help and we really want to partner with you. So please don't hesitate to contact the school uh, with your concerns. Many parents do wish to have some sort of parental parameters when it comes to the device itself. Uh, this would be really difficult for us to manage here at school. So if you are looking to have some sort of filter uh, on your network at home, uh, then it is best for you to contact your internet service provider and they will be happy to provide you with some help on creating those filters. I'm going to finish up now with a few things that you should keep in mind. The first is that if you have computing devices at home that you prefer, such as cell phones or tablets or other computers at home, the homework that students are assigned can be completed regardless of what device they use as long as the device has the ability to get. So it is not necessary that they have to have their school laptop in order for them to do the homework. If you prefer that the laptop not come home, there are teachers here after school that offer certain days of after school help on every team and students are able to stay after school and get that work done. There is not a substantial amount of homework that requires the machines, so the amount that is can easily be done after school and coordinated with your students' team and teachers to stay after and get it done here. So again, if you're not looking to have that battle at home, it's true that they can stay after school and do it here and then not take that device home with them. And finally, Regardless of whether you decide to opt in or opt out of having your child take the device home, you can always change your mind later on. This is the end of our first Parent Academy video. We hope that you do take part in our future Parent Academy activities. Our next Parent Academy should be about the apps that students use whether it is online or on their phone. We hope that you decide to attend future Parent Academy sessions. Thank you for watching.